All right, so the last couple review pods, well, pods in general, have been very, very Marvel saturated. So we're going to show our diversity again because the last time we did a DC movie was probably the Flash movie. Everybody has their opinions about that. But (laughs) the highly anticipated Aquaman 2 Lost Kingdom, right here, right now. And I will say it was it was leading up to this movie. It was a lot of controversy surrounding it. It's the 15th and final movie of the DC extended universe. It took me a while to get that. Um, so <laughs> explain to the people at home. This being the last, this being the last installment to the DC extended universe. And we're going to be transitioning into the DC universe. Correct. So this is the last movie in the slate for the DCEU or AKA the Snyderverse. Um, I'm not saying I'm the biggest fan of the DCEU. I like it. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of things that can grow and learn from it, but uh, it, I hate to see it go. Cause you've got characters that we already, that are already beloved and you know, that we're familiar with. And now we got to start all over again with the new reboot with James Gunn's DCEU. Um, I think we need to come up with a better name than that. But uh, besides, I love Jason Momoa. I was looking forward to this movie. Like you said, there's a lot of controversy going on. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the review. We're here to talk about the movie and our love for the movie. Like you said, we did a lot of Marvel um, pods. So now we're doing a DCU. So I like this movie. I ain't going to say I loved it, but I don't know. What you tell? What do you think? If we're just... All right, check this out. All right, this this is how I'm gonna do. This is how I'm I'm, I'm gonna do this, right? Mm-hmm. Out of all the DCU movie, DCEU movies, out of all fifteen, the first Aquaman movie was the best one out of all of them, second to none. Now this movie, it doesn't live up to the hype, considering the fact that the first one was so good, but I still enjoyed it. If that makes sense. No, no, I, I agree with you on that. Like, I mean, it 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 doesn't it li- it doesn't really live up to the height of the first one, but the first one was the best of all of them. I would have to say Aquaman one has to be like top three. Cause I was a big man I was a big fan of Man of the Steel uh Man of Steel. I did like that movie, the first one. That was that was a great movie. I'm you tired like of it? Superman. I, I I I am so tired of Superman. I, I... He's like I will never get tired of Spider-Man. I hate to bring this back to Marvel. I will never get tired of (laughs) Spider-Man. I will never get tired of the origin story of Spider-Man, even though we have different variations of it, but the same freaking concept. But -hmm. when it comes to Superman's origin story, it is such a drag. When I sit down, I have to watch this over and over and over again. I agree with you, yeah. I mean, how many times are we going to have to see the same concept being played out in origin stories. Cause I mean, we are getting another one and it's supposed to be when he's, a, I think like a young teenager or late teen where he's actually starting to learn how to use his superpowers. Like let's just skip it and just accept that fact that he like, you know, we got a, yeah. a Superman, like maybe two, three years in like the beginning of his rope, like they did with uh Robert Pattinson's Batman. Cause how many times do we need to see Mr. and Mrs. Wayne get, Murked in the alley. We don't need to. We, <laughs> we don't, don't need, need to. to. We already know this. We know this already. I've like I've literally seen. I read this book maybe like thirty times. Mm-hmm. We already I know. It. I agree with you. So all right, Crypto. But I did like the concept up, of the movie. Though. I yeah. did like the well, concept. Well, like, Man like of Steel. He, he did. Yeah, like he had to kill Zod. He had no choice. That was something that we never we never got to witness in a Superman movie though. Him killing because remember Superman's a very against killing okay but that's, my biggest that's, my pet peeve, point. that's my biggest pet peeve about superman that the fact that he just holds back too much when it's time when it's time to put the murder game down on something superman is down. the last person to show up to the show up to the battle with that like that's why i like batman batman don't make excuses he gets the job done but anyway oh yeah most definitely <laughs> so <laughs> it's back to aquaman this the sec Aquaman Two Lost Kingdom. It's a good movie. It just doesn't live up to the expectation of the first Aquaman movie for me. But it's it's definitely going to get 
Is Blue Beetle the new DC universe? Um, it's left up. It's left up to uh, you, uh, to the viewer's opinion. I like for me. I, I I did like that movie. I mean, I'm gonna go say it's 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 the first movie in the DCU universe. In right, James so Gunn's universe, go ahead and put, we're gonna put we're gonna put Blue Beetle in in the brand new category. So it's gonna for me. We're gonna do a list early. We're, we're right, five bet. minutes in. We're gonna do a list early. For me, it's we're doing. It's, we're going to five. All right. Aquaman one, Aquaman two, Suicide Squad. Which one? The first or second? First. Oh no! Nah. <laughs> stop, yo! Stop. First, I'm first. terrible. <laughs> Snyder's cut. Okay. And Batman v Superman. Okay, we got two different versions. You got the you got the uh the uh the original version, and you got the Snyder edition. I guess I gotta rewatch the Snyder. I guess I gotta watch the Snyder edition. So I'm I guess I'm going with the original one. No, that was terrible. The the Snyder edition was way better. There were so many like loopholes in the in the lot and that in the the theater version. Okay, mine. Mm. Okay, so mine would have to be. I can't. I can't get mad. I, Aquaman one is the first. All right, I'll give you that. Then I got Man of Steel. Then uh, the Snyder cut, Justice League. Even though that movie was long as hell, bro, but it was good. <laughs> He polished the hell out of that movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got Birds of Prey. That was a great movie. I did like that. Black Adam. And then I'm going to go with Suicide Squad 2. Because I did like Idris oh, Alba and I John Cena. I forgot about Black Adam. I forgot <laughs> about, Black, about Adam. Black Adam. I forgot all about Black Adam. Take out the uh, Batman v Superman. Put Black Adam at 5 for me. All right, bet. So... Can't get mad. Yo, Birds of Prey was a good movie, too. Harley Quinn, I'm a big fan it. of Ro- Margaret Robbie. That's a good movie. Well, I fell asleep watching it. I attempted it. So, I'll, 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 I'll try. I, well, first, I have to watch the Batman v Superman Snyder cut, because I didn't even know that thing existed. They have so many freaking cuts on HBO Max. I'm like, they got a, bl- a black and gray cut of, ba- of, of Justice League. They got the Snyder's cut. They got the theatrical cut. And they got another cut. I don't know what it is. So I was like, this this Snyder's cut is long as fuck. It was like, what, yeah. four hours? <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, four hours? I'm like, damn. Bro. So I had to sit there and watch it in like increments. I was like, oh, snap. I saw, I saw, I saw the original cut in the theater. And then everybody's like, I think it was you who told me about the Snyder's cut. You're going to watch the Snyder's cut. Like, what the fuck is Snyder's cut? And then he's like, this is the way it's supposed to be watched. So I'm watching yeah. it. This shit took me two days to watch. And then I went back to DC because I like to watch all the cartoon DC movies. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, damn, they got a black and gray version of this shit. Like, I could barely get through the Snyder's cut. Like, I'm not going to sit down and watch <laughs> another cut. Like, that's not happening for me. Uh, I feel you. I'm glad hmm. they gave him the opportunity to, pop, to to finish his version of the Justice League because what we got in the movie theater was garbage. <laughs> It was yeah. garbage. It's a lot of it's a lot of a lot of scenes in the movie that just don't mesh well together without the scenes that were taken out. Of course. And I just don't like how they did my man Batman though. I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of Ben Affleck as Batman. How they punked him so bad. Like I felt like he was desperate. He was like, yo, Superman needs to come back. We're all gonna die. We need to bring him back. But that's but that but he's but that's the thing. I don't know if you've seen which cartoon movie was it? The 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 uh, Justice League movie when Dark Side comes to Earth and they were con- they were co- collecting those uh, boxes. The mother box. Took, yeah, the mother box, and they took Superman to to Dark Side's base or whatever, and they was like, "We need Apocalypse. Him. Yeah, yeah, we got to get that. him. We need him. He's our big gun." I remember that. They all met each other in the movie at the same time, so they needed they needed Superman because at the end of the day, Superman he's supposed to be the protector of Earth and he wards off all 
galactical threats. But my only thing is that I'm so used to... Okay, we got two... I, there, I'll give you two references right now. Uh, Dark Side Apocalypse. You remember that movie when um, Dark Side um, kidnaps uh, Supergirl and then trains her? Yes. Yeah. She, she, first, she was trained by the Amazonians, and then she was kidnapped by Dark Side. And then my man Batman and Superman went to Apocalypse to go get um, his cousin back. Mm-hmm. And what did my man do? My man, my man Superman over there getting dogged by Darkseid. And my man Batman over there breaking down the codes. And then he ends up threatening Darkseid. And he ends up, like, making him kneel to, uh, 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 before him. Remember he grabbed him. He was like, you dare threatening me with my own, with my own device? And then he, then he said, yeah. And then he was like, so it's like I could just snap your throat right now and you would die. And then he says, any last words? And he called... That man gives him the codes, and then he was right. like, "Yeah, if, what was what was the name of those creatures? I can't remember." He said, "If I really, he said, one can destroy one planet. What if, like, if they all simultaneously got activated on Apocalypse?" He was like, "You dare threatening me!" And then he he puts my man down, and he said, "Just promise me that you you will just give up uh, a Supergirl and, and let us go, and we and, and we're good." And he he tells him he said if he he said you a mere human would sacrifice a few to save the many, but if it was the the Kryptonian or the Amazonian, you would have failed. Yo, that was a badass scene, bro. That's why that's yeah. that's what the Batman I know. That's the Batman I know. And then you got the other one. You got the uh, the animation series, uh, the the Justice League uh, Unlimited. I remember when Darkseid actually fused with Brainiac. Batman dodged the Omega beams. That was badass. He said, "No mortal in, in, in his entire life had ever dodged the Omega beams." That was badass. That's 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 yeah. the Batman I know. When he when he uh, jumped on top of the Parademon and it vanquished the Parademon. Yeah, and while over there, Lex, Lex Luthor over there talking that trash, and then he runs away like a coward. And mm-hmm. Batman was like, "You a punk?" <laughs> right. Hey yo, but going back to the going back to Aquaman because this is what we're here for in 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 the. Dog, Aquaman was handling his own with Stephen Wolf, bro. That's the point. What I'm trying to say is like they have Batman in the background. Like, yeah, I'm not even a superhero. I ain't got no superpowers, so I'm gonna just stay here in the cut. Wonder Woman and Aquaman, Dog and Stephen Wolf together, even though they weren't enough to actually put him down. But I mean, damn, they they op like they made Aquaman op in, in the in this uh, Snyderverse, bro. Like he's strong as hell. I don't remember him being this strong in the Justice League, but maybe just is my opinion of it. This so, is why I'm a big oh, fan of Jason Momoa. I, I was gonna say, did you did you notice like the tone difference in this movie compared to the first movie and in Justice League? As far as yeah. like it was, it was a lot dark. It was seemed a lot darker in those movies, and compared to this movie, it's a lot, it's a, a, a lighter tone. Yeah, I I, I saw that because it. For Aquaman 2, it was more of a, a brighter tone. F is for family. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw I saw a little bit of a, a Fast and Furious reference back there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hence, he was the villain in the last one. <laughs> right. Family is everything. Blood is thicker than water. So, I mean, yeah, I saw it. I, I mean, one thing I do give Aquaman 2, James Wan, the director, is that the, we didn't have to watch all the other DCEU movies just to watch this movie. It was kind of like it was separated in its own little world. I like that a lot. Like I went in there not having to watch all the other DC stuff just just to watch this movie. Well, obviously you had to watch the first Iron Man movie. I mean, uh, uh, Aquaman movie, excuse me. True, yeah. But, you know, you didn't have to watch the Snyderverse. You didn't have to watch Blue Beetle. Mm -hmm. No, you could just go straight into the movies and know what you were watching. And that's what it was. It left off in the first one. Yeah, there were some questions. There is some stuff in there that, you know, like we all, the fans have, like if the world was dying from like um, global warming, where were all the other Justice League members at? But I mean, that's just my opinion. But I mean, we're not here to watch them. We're here to watch Aquaman. We're we're, we're definitely going to get to that part. But uh, I do, I do want to bring up the fact the biggest, the biggest part the question mark in this movie, that were leading into this movie, was Amber Heard. Obviously, she had the off the screen issue with with Johnny Depp. 
Um, with these movie studios, they have been known for off the off the screen issues. You get eliminated mm-hmm. off of the of the of the set. So, at the time when we heard about the Amber Heard thing, it's leading up to this movie. I'm like, how can you eliminate her? She's like a, a has a pivotal role in in the Aquaman movie. So. I was extremely surprised in this movie that that she lasted throughout the whole movie, and we end up having a happy ending. But there's definitely there's like they they I, I I can I can see they attempted to eliminate her. I would probably say they put they put her in there about maybe what twenty five, maybe thirty five, yeah, twenty thirty minutes of these tops. Yeah, they about gave her 20, 20. They gave her they give her shine for a little bit, like a caring yeah. mother. I mean. I I just feel like at the beginning of the movie because it ta- it starts off they have the baby uh Arthur Jr. Mm-hmm. and it's it's showing the split life with Aquaman going between the land and the sea but it's a whole lot of Aquaman taking care of the baby which was a little bit odd for me watching it I'm like yo where's Mira like like she doesn't have to have speaking lines just like have her like I don't know. Rub Aquaman's back as he's taking care <laughs> of the baby or something. Like it just seemed it just seemed odd just sitting down and watching that on screen where the mother is nowhere to be found. The grandmother is nowhere to be found. Like that was just weird to me. Like really weird to me. Like none of the female cast members were involved with the baby at all. Yeah. Now looking back at it now yeah you're right bro like they were never really around when he was taking care of the baby but i mean i guess that's the explanation of why she didn't get so much screen time but damn you're right so he's running a kingdom and then also babysitting when he gets back home it's it's weird like you would think a grandmother would want to be around their grandchild where's my grandbaby like they would think that she would want to be there and my only explanation She's the queen, of Atlant- the queen of Atlantis. Okay, cool. But she, Arthur is now the king. So she basically gave up her, her status. And mm-hmm. I'm, we're sitting down, we're watching Arthur and his dad in the movie, spending time with the baby. Like he's a stay at home dad with his grand, with his, da- with, with his, with his father. Like it just, it just didn't look right to me. It really did not look right to me. I, I can agree with you. Like, yeah, he's a king, a full time king. You know, what I mean, you would think he would be at work most of the time, but I guess he tried to make time for his kid. I mean, his dad was a single dad, so I mean, I see the point. They're trying, they're trying to establish that he's trying to be just like his father, to be there for his son as much as possible. I guess it's the message of the story, right? So I, I would probably say that's like that's probably the biggest thing that stuck out to me within the first 15 minutes of this movie was the absence of Amber Heard and the absence of uh, Nicole Kidman as far as their involvement with the baby and then like at the beginning it seemed like they were trying to fill in so much so much but it's it felt like something was missing too as well for them to get to the part of the story where we're we're currently at right now you get what I'm saying with it? Like, it just yeah. seemed... All right, brief summary. This happened, this happened, this happened. We're here now. Accept it. All right, go. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, I, I give you that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just trying not to overlook that fact because, I mean, like I said, like, I, I went in there thinking that this movie wasn't going to was gonna, gonna be that great. I thought it was going to be a bomb because so far the movies haven't been that great. Uh, Wonder Woman two wasn't that great. That was terrible. Flash, don't even get me started with Flash, bro. <laughs> you know what's funny about Flash? Because I don't think we talked about this in the last joke. Um, that when Flash went back in time, he killed Arthur. Because remember, his dad mm-hmm. was never had uh Aquaman. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even married to the. He wasn't even married to his mom. They, his mom never. His mom never met his dad, so therefore they never had kids. He was married to another woman, a fat, fat obese woman, <laughs> and the cat was named Arthur. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he killed Aquaman in that universe. Yo, that was terrible, bro. Uh, I just, I'm just laughing at it because he killed Aquaman in that movie. 
technically because he never his parents never met so therefore he was never created that's wild right so all right so now we're currently current present day in the movie david kane that's manta in the first movie arthur was responsible of the death of manta's father so in this movie manta is on like this on this on the, on this on this path to seek revenge against Arthur Aquaman. And he pairs himself up with a marine biologist and they find this uh Atlantean artifact and it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a Triton which basically possesses him and he it basically promises him power to destroy Arthur. Well I would probably say uh manipulates him in trying to destroy Arthur. Well fuels his rage for uh, rage for uh, rage for revenge against Arthur, and I will say, I told you this probably like a billion times already. I loved Manta in this movie. Oh my goodness! And on the down low, I was kind of rooting for him too. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I I love I love Black Manta in this movie. Oh, he's a G, bro. Like he, I, I it, the whole like revenge. Of, like as a side note, like dog, he's a great villain. Like I, I, I just wish they gave him more screen time. Like bro, like I wanted, I wanted to see, like I wanted to see everything he's done within that time and within that movie to get to where he got to. And when they gave him powers, bro, he was on par with Aquaman. Yo, that joint was, oh god, that shit was lovely, bro. Just to I'm see him, how passionate he is to get to, just to get back at Aquaman, bro. That bad. I'm sorry. That scene. I know it's. I know it's minor. But him tapping the damn trident on his shoulder, that shit was dope. I like that shit. <laughs> if I could watch that shit on repeat, that shit was so fucking dope. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 most definitely. Oh, yeah, when he had the trident split in half and he had it on his back, and then he pulls yeah. that joint out and just like, puts it together. That Joe, and like, that Joe. put it together and screw that shit together. That was, that like, was dope, damn. too. That was dope, too. But when they're, when they're walking, they was walking to get into their ships because they was about to get the... The Oracalcum, yeah, yeah. In the beginning, when they were and walking he, in the hallway, yeah, and he didn't bang the joke. That yeah. joke was tight, bro. That joke was tight. I was like, damn, yo, he a badass dog. That's a bad motherfucker right there, yo. I can watch that joke on repeat. That's how much I love that. Like, my man walking, he about to take care of business. But yes, that like Manta on the down low, I was rooting for him. I was, I seriously was rooting for Manta, like. Hell yeah! I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I kind of thought he was gonna kill kill Aquaman, bro. I was like, oh snap, he about to actually get his revenge and shit. Oh right. snap! Right. So we so he gets the black trident. So we do like a, like a five month a five month time jump. So Manta he plans to attack Atlantis so he can steal. The aura cal or from 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 Atlant Atlantis for his Atlantean machines, right? Mm -hmm. So the aura calcum, it's supposed to be like gases that basically raises the planetary temperatures and cause extreme weather and ocean acid acidification. So it can it can cause planetary extinction. Uh, for the for the Atlantean Atlantean and Kingdom. Now you you was you was get, getting ready to get into Aquaman asking the the surface for help, but I wanted to ask first, like, why couldn't we just have like a character crossover in this movie? Like, why are we? Let's let's find the first random scientist we could find. Like, why don't you talk to Batman? Like I feel like Batman would be like the the go to guy to talk to as far as like what you should do as far as Atlanta Atlantis moving forward. Like we're dying, you know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, I also so, felt he could have helped find find Manta instead of having having to go to uh, Kingfish, I believe it was. Right, right. Well, let's let's get the Orm because. Arthur, he turns the Orm, which Orm is locked up currently in this movie due to what happened in the first movie. So it was Orm's idea to go talk to what, what was the what was the guy's name again that you said? Uh, Kingfish. Kingfish. Let me go talk to Kingfish. So 
I will say Orm had a badass moment too when he had like no water in his body and he was like crawling to the he was crawling this, to the, the to the sea and then like he kind of like exploded up like freaking Rey Mysterio and he dogged those those three uh, henchmen that jump was dope I ain't gonna lie to you that jump was dope yo it's like a, a Superman type scenario where like Superman needs the sun in order to boost him up give mm-hmm. him like a power boost because that jump kind of did remind me kind of like a, a a Senkai boost in Dragon Ball Z for all you anime fans out there. Like, as soon as he got in that water, he disappeared and the waves took him. Yeah, when he came out that wave and he started dogging those uh those demon-looking creatures, that jump was tight. Mm-hmm. So the, I want to ask you, what what you think about the chemistry of Orm and, and Aquaman in this movie? I like their chemistry, bro. It, 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 I really do feel like they're brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get that brotherly vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, one wants to be better than the other, and the other one just doesn't care. He's just like, bro, I don't, I don't care about being better than you. Like, <laughs> I am Aquaman, so I don't really care. And then the whole, the whole trash talking that they talk about, he was like, so let me get this straight. You took the throne from me, but you don't even want it? And he was like, nah, bro, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to get close to you, man. I wanted to always know what my little brother was like. I always Man. wanted to have a little brother, and he's just like, so hold up. So not only did you embarrass me, took the throne from me, you took my girl from me, you didn't even want it? <laughs> that just was, uh, I mean, it, it, it goes to show you, like, yo, his Orm being, you know, like, this guy who was taught to be, like, be on the, like, always be prepared because his father taught him that uh, the Arthur was going to come take it from him. Like, his whole life was kind of like a lie to him. Right. And it was just, and, and the fact that his brother took it away from him, I mean, let's just get this straight, though. Like, he couldn't have taken it. He didn't take the throne from Orem without the help of uh of his girl. Because he didn't do true. it alone. True, true. I really was, I really wanted them to end the movie with those two eating, sharing a cheeseburger together. Yeah, that, that would have been I felt cool. like that would have been a perfect ending. But. Damn, Aquaman did him dirty when he made him eat the cockroach. He's like, yeah, we eat cockroaches too. <laughs> that joke was funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no way in hell you gonna catch me eating a cockroach, bro. Nope. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty freaking gross. So Orum, he touches the dark trident, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how they learn. Uh that's how they learned that Cordax, the brother of King Atlantan, was is the ruler of the Lost Kingdom of Necris. He basically was in prison with black magic that had the uh that had the the um his blood. I'm I oh my goodness. It was a blood his, uh uh ritual. Blood magic, I believe they called it. Yep, blood magic ritual. So they needed an Atlantean. Atlantean's blood, which is Arthur, either Arthur or Orms, or they could have took they could have took Arthur Junior's, which that's what Manta ended up taking taking uh, Arthur Junior from the from the lighthouse and killing his father. Yeah, Arthur's correct. Father. Yep. So it was pretty badass, though. By the way, yeah, I don't agree with that, but I mean that was pretty badass. Hey, a, a life for a life. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> So I is a like, past, I said, like I, I'm rooting. I was rooting for Manta in this movie. I feel you, like, but I mean, like, for me, I don't know. Kid, don't take the kids, though. Don't, don't take, don't the take kids. the kid, though. Don't touch the kids, though. You, know, you can go after the, yeah. the the rest of them, but like the kids, nah. Don't don't do that, bro. You couldn't kidnap. You couldn't kidnap the mom and have the mom watch the kid and then kill the dad. I feel like that's true. fair. Like true. Gotta, that man ain't had no code. No code, bro. But at this point, he was <laughs> desperate, bro. He wanted that revenge. <laughs> He wanted that be- revenge badly, bro. I feel him, but at the same time, just I feel like there's a code, bro. You just you don't touch the kid, bro. You don't do that. But hey, it's neither here nor there. He did it. So comes down to Orm and and Aquaman teaming up along with along with uh the army from Atlanta Atlantis to stop <clears throat> to stop uh Kane. And I keep forgetting what Cordax. That's his name. Cordax. Cordax. To stop Cordax from releasing being released into the world. Yeah, into the world. So I will say 
that final that final fight scene between Manta, Manta Aquaman, and Orm. It could have been better. I'm just gonna put it like that. It could have been better. I liked it. I didn't pose of it. My only, my only. Uh, how to say this? My only disagreement was that he didn't. They didn't give him a time with the superpowers. Like he worked this hard to dog Aquaman just to have to be taken away by Orum. I didn't agree with that at all. Should have gave him more shine. I kind of wish that he kind of had both of them by the throat and they were both like, they came up with a better idea of taking away his power instead of having Orum touch the Black Trident and then was like, oh, so this is what it feels like to have this much power as an Atlantean. I'm like, eh, that was kind of cheesy writing. That was kind of lazy writing. Well, they both, they both touched that Black Trident. Yeah, they I both felt like did. that was a nice, that was a nice little uh, that was a that was a nice little moment between those two holding the trident at the same time. You don't want this. You don't want this, Orum. You don't want this. Hand me the trident. <laughs> and then he tells him, "I love you, bro." And then he popped tears, and he was like, "Come on, do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. Like, just let it go." And my man just like, "Damn, he lets go." Yep. So we get the resurrection of <clears throat> Cordax, right? And mm-hmm. that was the other thing. I felt like Cordax's little short moment of him just popping out while well, standing up off his throne. And then Arthur just throws his trident right at the dark trident. I feel like it should have been a, like, give him a fight scene or something. Like you just resurrected him. Like give him a little fight scene. Yeah. Like that was, that was, that was kind of annoying. Like you, you worked this man up to like, to, to be like the badass villain, like the main villain of the storyline. And then like you take him away, like what, like five, ten seconds later? And in the in the in the last thing too, like why would if you had his trident, you throwing it to him isn't going to kill him. <laughs> why did you give him his arsenal back, bro? That was one thing I didn't understand why Arthur did that. He was, that was like, stupid. hey, take this. And it, then my man just grabbed it, it was like, thank you. <laughs> And his brother's like, yo, bro, why did you do that? And he was like, oh, uh, oh, snap. <laughs> Not only did you throw the trident, the black trident, to his original master, then you have the idea where your bro's like, your your little brother goes and tell you, hey, take this other trident and throw it right back at him. Maybe this time it might work. To me, that was just like, that's not how it works. I was going to say, lazy writing, bro. I'm like, so if the first one didn't work, you'll try it again, and maybe the second time it might work, which luckily it worked, but... <laughs> like, yeah, it should have been some type of some type of trident play or something. It should have been where... a standoff. Like, they both, you know, attacking with the tridents to see who's stronger than the other. Or, here's a, here's a better one. You should have had Manta, Orm, and Arthur fight them off at the same time. I could see that. Yeah, but at this point, Manta lost his powers. You could have made an attempt. Well, what? Let's say because the suit was it the suit or was it the fact that he was possessed that gave him the powers? It was the pow- It was the the trident that gave him the powers. It wasn't the suit. The suit kept him from like drowning because of the pressures of the water under the ocean, and then also it was the, the fact that he could be able to take the hit. So let me. So in the comic book, how was how how did Manta have power? Was it the trident still, or was it something else? No, it's the suit. Okay, so I feel like they should have did something with that suit where he should have had powers, and I feel like that would have been a better better writing if he him Orm and Arthur would have fought. Cordax. Yeah. <laughs> The only difference between the comic and the in the in the in the live action is that in the comics, if I remember correctly, because I'm not a big Aquaman fan, that Aquaman was kind of like Superman. He didn't really know how to fight. He knew how to brawl or like wrestle, but like he wasn't in like to you know like uh, mixed martial arts and stuff like that, like self defense. Like, but in this in the live action, he seems to know how to carry himself. So he's a fighter. Like now, not only is he a brawler, he actually knows self self defense. Hence why we why he's such a badass. Well, 
in the first movie, remember William Defoe, William Defoe's character taught him how to fight. No, nah, true, true, yeah. But well, that's he trained the, him. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just establishing the difference, though, in the comics. In the comics, I don't think he had actual real training whatsoever. Like, he just knows how. He can take a beating, though. Right. Yeah. Because so, Black, Man, Black Manta, yo, he, dog, he was a beast, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, when he was fighting against Orem and, and Arthur, dog, he was holding his own. Yeah. That was Black Manta. Like I told you, I was rooting for him on the down low. And and, and, and those that 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 energy beam he had coming out of his helmet, bro. Yeah. I thought he killed. Uh, what's her name? Um, um, Amber Heard's character. Amber, I thought, yeah. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking in the movie. I was like, yo, they about to they about to kill her off because she ain't look too good when he put when he put that when we put that beam on her. Yeah, when she he put that beam on her, I was like, damn, dog, you. And then, the, <laughs> and then he, who else did he do? And yeah, when he did it to Orem, too? When he shot yeah. Orem with the beams, I was like, damn, dog, he killed two characters at the same time, bro. Holy shit. Yo, he was badass. And yo, can we talk about that when he went to go uh, uh, kidnap uh, uh, Junior and his dad uh -huh. was answering the phone? I mean, when his dad went to go get the flashlight. Right. And then, like, you see his eyes just glow in the dark. First of all, like, how you not hear him back there? <laughs> but that scene, though, when he's, like, hiding in the hallway and his mm -hmm. eyes just glow, yo, that was badass, bro. That was badass. I'm like, oh, shit. Yo, I really thought he was going to kill his father like that. Just shoot the energy beam at his dad and just annihilate him. Yeah. For sure. That, that was a badass scene. Him just, that, just the eyes just in the dark like that. That was no bull. That was and so then too, good. when he was in the when he was in the um in the uh what's it called the the ship uh what they call that uh I can't remember the top of my head right now the name of the ship but the point when I'm saying when he was in the ship and he had the helmet on his side and he had the trident in the one hand and he was sitting there like holding on the helmet and when he got up he almost forgot the helmet and he was like nah give me that jump and he puts it on his head yo that's badass yo that's badass yes all right so so before. Cause I'm, I was gonna, I wanted to ask, like, cause I remember at the end of the Flash movie, there was a post credit scene of Arthur. He passes out in a puddle. Like, what was that about? Oh, that's when Flash was telling him about his adventures that he had in, throughout the movie. And then he tells him throughout the entire multiverse that Arthur is the only character who exists in every universe. Like he mm. looks the same. Like so, he's technically a Nexus being. Because there are still talks because everybody got fired except for Jason Momoa at this point in time when Flash came out. And everybody was wondering whether Jason Momoa was going to still play Aquaman or or is he playing another role? So it's a little Easter egg because he, he said, because when he, when he fell in the puddle, he said, let me get this straight. In every universe, I'm Aquaman. And he says, yeah. And he was like, whoa, that's cool. And then he passes out on the uh, on the puddle. So in every universe, he's a nexus being. If he doesn't exist in that universe, though, but I mean, that's pretty cool. So it kind of right. made me feel maybe Jason Momoa might actually stay as Aquaman because, dude, like he is Aquaman, bro. I don't see anyone else playing as Aquaman. That's true. I, I, I at this point, I don't. I feel like he established himself as being Aquaman. I don't see anybody else being Aquaman. Same here. Like, like, look, I'm not against if Jason, I mean, not Jason, uh, if James Gunn lets Jason Momoa play as Aquaman, I'm not against it. If he's a Nexus being, I'm all for it, bro. If you just reboot the cast of the Justice League, I'm cool with it. Just let Jason Momoa stay as Aquaman. I'm not opposed to it. I mean, if they decide to change him with another actor, I'm cool with that too. But, I mean, you already established that he is that man. I mean, just like Robert Downey Jr. I hate to go back to Marvel, but he is Iron Man. Good luck to trying to find someone to replace that character. Good luck. Because you're going to have, like, big shoes to fill, bro. 1,000%. All right, so the last scene. We have the press conference. Aquaman's going to reveal himself to the surface world that Atlantis exists. Where are you sitting at with that part? I like it. Like, I think it's about time they did that. But I would have thought they would have already known that Atlantis existed, but maybe that's just maybe just me. 
But there was a huge, huge, huge Marvel reference right there, bro. I just mentioned Robert Downey Jr. I mean, he pulled a an Iron Man out out of his ass. I am Aquaman. It had, it had a little <laughs> bit of a blend between Iron Man and Black Panther. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah, when um uh, T'Challa um told the world about uh Wakanda, I, I did see right. that. I did see that coming out. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. I, I liked it. I was I wasn't close to that ending. I did like the whole I am Aquaman and him just dri- just driving off into the ocean. It was pretty cool. It was right. a nice farewell ending. I don't, I'm. You think it, you feel like it was it did it justice where we can there's no. You don't think anything was missing from this movie as far as we get to the end and it's like, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. The only I would say my only little petite about it. Is that I? W- I wish his his homies were there to like welcome the Atlantis to the world. You know what I mean? Where was Batman? Where was Superman? Where was Wonder Woman? Where the Flash at? Where Cyborg? But eh, whatever, I'm cool with it. I ain't, I'm not against it. I like it. It it made me feel that there was going to be a third sequel coming up. That's how I felt. They could leave it to interpretation where they can continue the movie off with a third movie. I would like to see a, a Aquaman number three. But I don't think we're ever going to get that. So, so last thing before we end up closing this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we always we always go back to talking about killing off villains. Do you think okay. Mantis, Manta is dead? Well, how they say in, in in superhero movies, if you don't see the body, technically he ain't dead. I don't think he's dead, bro. I don't think so. He kind of, he's had a hard fall on the way down, bounced off of a freaking metal beam on his way down, so. Yeah, but I don't know. He, some, some, somebody might resurrect him or I don't know, but I don't I think, see, I don't he think he's dead. had some of that energy left in him, in his body or something. It could be a possibility. Yeah, I would like, I, I wouldn't be opposed against that idea. Like he still has some of the power of the Black Trident in him. I wish he got to keep up superpowers. That's my only thing. Like with the t- all that time he had with the staff, he should have mm-hmm. been able to at least keep some of that power. Yeah, I agree, one thousand yeah. percent. All right, what we got? What's next on the as far as DC is concerned? Um, as far as I know, the slate is we got a new Superman movie coming up, and then we got um. Uh, the new Penguin show, uh, TV show coming out as well, but that takes place in a different universe, Robert Pattinson's universe. Oh, that's gonna be good. I think that's gonna be good. I did like what's his name as Penguin. Um, uh, oh my God, what's his name? The actor. The actor. Who played Penguin in Batman? I just I call him the actor. Oh, uh, hold on. I gotta remember. Oh, Colin Farrell. I can't believe I forgot his name. Colin Farrell. Yo, he was a badass as penguin. Oh, yo. that penguin. Yeah, that oh, penguin. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be good. That's, that's gonna, be, gonna good. be definitely good, yo. That's, that's gonna be that's that coming start? up soon. Uh sometime next year. I can't remember. I think it's March. I might be wrong on that. I thought it was January. Could be. It's so hard to keep up with all these movies, yo. Yeah, I thought it was January. Well, 2024. And I think the Joker is also coming out with a sequel, too. Yeah, so it's late 2024. It has eight episodes. Oh, that's just going to be tight. So, yeah, I liked it. I liked it in that Batman movie for sure. Um,. So, any final thoughts before we close this? No, I like Aquaman. It was a good movie. I would go see it again. Like, like it's it's a definitely a rewatch. I'm gonna rewatch it probably when we get off. It's just it's sad to see the DCU is gone now. So, I mean, hopefully, Jane Gunn knows what he's doing. I got high faith in him. I mean, we'll see what goes on. What's gonna happen in the future for the DC universe? I'm hoping it's nothing but good things. There's a lot of writing on it. We finally need to get an actual like DC universe going because marvel can't be the only one doing it bro 
we need competition in this joint. 